Oh, and so it begins. I like to be honest with people, I am a purebred stallion hater. It's the reason I get up in the morning to brush my ass and wipe my teeth. Problem is, I have to let that beast hide within, very deep, and only let it out ever so often, because I don't want to be accused of being too negative or off-putting. But sometimes that inner demon is allowed to be released at full force. And today is one of those special occasions, because someone who I have been a long-time hater of for years now is actually genuinely a bad person, Mr. Ben Tellery better known as Bentelect. A 32-year-old TikToker whose only talent is to be slightly more interesting than an AI language model. Essentially, his content is, is he'll take memes off Twitter, I'm not calling it X, that's stupid, and just straight up read them in front of a green screen while jumping up and down and adding next to nothing of value. In fact, when I was attempting to be a TikToker, don't judge me too harshly, I made a couple of parodies of his style of video. Although I can only find the one that I did because I deleted a bunch of them out of embarrassment. Two phones, okay, I need this. A toothpaste dispenser sir absolute genius piping thick miss piggy okay i got it right at least i have a legitimate reason i was just trying to grow my youtube channel what's your excuse ashley 35 from wisconsin why are you twerking to the latest doja cat song you have two kids go pay your mortgage bro anywho ben's style of brain rock content is unsurprisingly incredibly popular and he has managed to amass a credible size of a tiktok following 11 million and over and that's nothing to sneeze on when it comes to tiktok yes it's incredibly easy to gain followers but i will always stand by my opinion that if you have less than 5 million, you can't leverage that channel to do literally diddly squat. But while we're on the topic of leverage, most people with sizable channels like that on any social media app focus on getting money. Why not? You've made it, make your payday. Ben, on the other hand, is trying to leverage that fame to get something even more precious than the dollar. A wee but a p And he's going about it in the grossest way possible. Now, unlike other career paths where p is a byproduct of your fame, say for example, a rapper, a rock star, or even a traditional YouTuber might get a little bit on the side because just of their notoriety a TikToker who just reads memes all day and is probably only known by a select few people doesn't exactly let off the right pheromones. In spite of Ben's clearly traditional attractiveness and clear height advantage, having the personality of, say, I don't know, a Danish painter isn't exactly going to bring in the punani. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just finished the wall. I'm watching the paint dry, yes. He just radiates that where's my hug at girl energy. And to be fair, he just kind of seems like the guy who's never really been to the fish market too often. So what is an oak with millions of followers and the inability to get laid meant to do? Go to the professionals, of course. Benjamin decided to reach out to a one Jordan Max, an OnlyFans creator as well as a traditional star. I'm not sure which one came first. It's a real chicken and egg scenario. The invitation he sent out was an offer to do a podcast with him. In this podcast, the pair were meant to be doing pickle tasting. There's a very cheap joke in there, but I'm gonna let that one lie. Three hours before this podcast was set to take place, Ben decided it would be a good idea to offer his own version of a pickle tasting. Yes, I know I said I'd leave it lie, but if you're offering up a layup, I'm gonna have to take the slam dunk. If you can't read in between the lines, basically, Ben offered to do an OnlyFans video with Jordan. Out of the goodness of his heart, I'm sure. Jordan, being quite calm, collective, and rather respectful, politely declined, which should be fine in its own right. Yes, it's weird that Ben even asked in the first place, but it's something you could let go. However, Ben had to act like child version of me when I couldn't get my own way and proceed to throw a hissy fit. He then cancelled the podcast on her, to which of course Jordan asked why, even though she probably already knew the answer, and he bluntly told her without even trying to make an excuse, I invited you so we could do OnlyFans together and see where things led. A thing he did not even discuss with her initially at all. Now, Ben, aside from this being really, really creepy, I'm not gonna look at this from a white knight stand. Standpoint. There's plenty of other losers who are happy to do that for me. I'm gonna look at this from a businesswoman's perspective. She is a professional. There is almost no benefit she would gain from doing an OnlyFans video with you. Not to mention, as a professional, you need to go through the correct processes of casting, safety and disease checks, and verification of age and identity. It's not just a process of drop trow and get to it. That industry is heavily, heavily moderated now, as it should have always been. And although I don't doubt that you probably don't have a disease because because you seem as if you've never touched a woman to begin with, it's not just something you can do off the spur of the moment. And trust me, Jordan is a true, true talent. I have watched hundreds of her videos in the process of making this, and I forgot the point I was trying to make. Now, to me, this is a little bit of speculation, but I can only assume that Jordan was planning on letting sleeping dogs lie. But I think after thinking about it for just a little bit longer, she kind of realized that 
Wait a minute. If this dude thinks it's okay with me, has he done it to other girls before? And if so, to what extent? Jordan decided in that case, and rather justifiably so, to leak the DM exchange between the two on Twitter and put Homeboy on blast, as it were. Typically, I'm not in favor of leaking private DMs, but I think I have to agree with Jordan's logic on this one. Ben, I might remind you, were a 32-year-old man, thought it'd be appropriate to respond in due course, as after all, she was tarnishing his good name. Instead of offering an apology, a rebuttal, or even an explanation of events that led to this, Ben doubled down and just straight up said, I will sue you. Also, not a great look, Benny boy. I'm pretty sure you can imagine how everybody felt towards Ben's response. I mean, if you were going to break it down into plain terms, you invited this woman on under false pretenses by your own omission, and then when you couldn't get your own way, you threatened to sue and silence the woman who exposed you. Silencing my victims? Okay, I gotta try this. Ben had to later retract his claws and issue out an apology video where he didn't address any of the issues at hand and is now currently back to his old ways. There's also been a flurry of accusations by a bunch of other women, but as of right now, not a single one of them is credible. Of course, it goes without saying what he did is atrocious and it's very evil. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is Harvey Weinstein as shenanigans, but another issue that people have been taking up with this situation is the age gap between the two of them. You see, Ben is 52 and Jordan is the very young and victimizable age of 26. You know, she honestly doesn't know any better and, and she could have been taken advantage of even though she's at the same age where she can legally rent a car. You f morons. This type of cuck is starting to make my blood vessels pop. Age gaps between two consenting legal adults is normal. I'm gonna prefix this with saying, yes, I personally do believe that you should go no lower than 20, but if a 45 year old man and a 20 year old woman want to hook up, no one is taking advantage of anyone. You are not a child when you are 20. I am not sure where this is coming from, but within the past five years, there's been this weird surge of people being obsessed with age gaps. And even when it's two consenting adults, they don't qualify it in their brain. Is it distasteful that Leonardo DiCaprio, a nearly 50-year-old man, exclusively dates 25-year-olds? Sure, a little bit. But he's not holding those 25-year-olds at gunpoint saying that you will be with me. And he's also not like Bentelect, trying to use his clout in order to gain sexual favors. These are grown women making grown women decisions. Robust queens. And if they want to see a little bit of salt and pepper down below, that is their right. You absolute children. Please grow up and understand that there are more serious issues in the world. You're fixating on the wrong point in this issue. Why are we not focusing on the guy who is literally trying to manipulate another person into sleeping with him? And not like in the cute TikToker way where it's like, oh, he was gaslighting me. Oh, he was doing this to me. Psychology word five. No. Bentelec saw her as an object that he could trade and curry some of his followers in order to get her to sleep with him. How is that any different from any Hollywood executive taking legitimate advantage of other people? Thank God Jordan was smart enough and ballsy enough and successful enough in her own right to call him the loser that he is. That's all the energy I have in the gas tank, guys. I legitimately had something pretty traumatizing happen to me yesterday and I quite literally nearly died last night. If you want to find out how that happened, you should probably legally subscribe because because that's gonna be my next video, baby. And just to prove I'm not just licking your teeth and calling it a French kiss, your boy got the burn marks to prove it. I am in a truly bad way. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.